Good evening, everyone. I praise Chapel of Bible Oxnard. This is Pastor Johnny Montillo, welcoming you to our Wednesday midweek service. I hope and I pray that tonight's message be an encouragement and inspiration, and that you apply tonight's biblical principles in your daily walk with Jesus Christ. As always, I want to thank the shepherd of our church, Pastor Mondo Carrillo, and his wife, Sister Veronica Carrillo, for all they do for the body of Christ. Continue to keep them in your daily prayers always. I'm excited for tonight's word because I believe it's going to inspire and motivate each and every one of you. So with that being said, let us open up in a word of prayer so we can dive and begin to unpack God's word. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, because you are great, mighty, wonderful, and amazing. You lead us, you guide us, and you draw us, Father God, into the knowledge of victory that we have in and through you. So I pray tonight that as we enter into your presence, enter into your word, that you guide us, you lead us, and you bless us, Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we surrender tonight's service unto you, and as always, as always, we pray and await with expectation that lives be set free, delivered, restored, renewed, and made new in and by your power. These things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm excited for tonight's word because tonight we're going to be talking about living victoriously in and through Christ. And living victoriously in Christ is not merely an ideal that we should have. It, it, it's, a, it's a present reality for every believer, for each and every one of us. It's something that we can truly have. And through the power of Christ, we become equipped to overcome the challenges that we face. And we begin to walk in triumph, no longer walking in defeat, but walking in triumph. And as we enter into tonight's word, we're going to explore three key verses that I believe will provide us insights into living victoriously and in through Christ. Each of these verses, as we begin to unpack them, I hope they reveal motivation, inspiration, and draw you into dedication and even application for each and every one of us seeking to live victorious lives in and through Christ. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Philippians chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 13. And this verse reads, and we should all know this verse and apply it as much as we can. And the verse reads, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And this is a foundational verse for understanding how to live victoriously. How to live victoriously. And let's dive deeper into its significance. See, the motivation behind this verse, it resides in the recognition of our, our, our limitations as human beings. That we can't do all things by ourselves. We can only do all things through Christ who grants us the strength to do those things. On our own, we are often incapable of overcoming challenges, overcoming obstacles, and overcoming whatever life throws at us. However, as the Apostle Paul wrote, he declares that through Christ, through Christ, we have access to a divine source of strength that will strengthen us always. And recognizing this should motivate us to shift our focus from the inadequacies we have to the uh, inadequacies we have as human beings, to the unlimited power available to us through our relationship with Jesus Christ. See, this verse, it stems from the realization that our potential is not confined by our circumstances or our abilities, but rather our potential is boundless because it's rooted in Christ's strength that he allows us to take part in. This verse inspires every believer to adopt a, a mindset, if you will, of a possibility and perseverance. Getting rid of that mindset of impossibility or, or, or that discouragement. But having that mindset, it cultivates within us that possibilities are in this. And it encourages us to view challenges not as these insurmountable obstacles, these things that we can't overcome, but rather as opportunities for Christ's strength to be made perfect in our weaknesses, as stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It calls for us to, to have a dedication and committedness to Christ as our source of strength. It challenges us to surrender our self-reliance and instead rely on Christ's sufficiency. And I believe when we do that, we can walk victoriously. We can walk in victory and not a defeatist attitude anymore. Not seeing those obstacles as something that is, that is going to break us. But seeing those obstacles has a chance for God to reveal His victory in and through us and to reveal His strength in and through us. Living victoriously in Christ, based on the verse we just read, it entails us to do certain things. And it tells us to cultivate a deep, intimate relationship with Christ because that's how we get strengthened. And then it, it, it compels us, even if you will, to, to seek His guidance and wisdom in every decision and in every endeavor that we go into. 
And it allows us to step out in faith to pursue God's given, uh, uh, God-given dreams that he's given us. Knowing that in Christ, strength will be enabled, we will be enabled to accomplish them. Only in Christ's strength. And having that strength that Christ gives us, we can walk in victory because we can endure trials, hardships, and whatever may come our way with assurance that Christ's strength will sustain us. See, Philippians 4.13, it serves as a, as a powerful reminder that our ability to live victoriously in Christ is not contingent on our own strength, but on His strength that He gives us. And by embracing this truth and applying the principles uh, that we just uh, laid out in our lives, we can experience a profound transformation characterized by resilience, courage, and triumph and victory over each and every obstacle that comes our way. Such a powerful thing to walk in. Moreover, chapter, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 37 gives us even more detail. And the verse reads, But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through Him who loved us. And this verse, it offers us profound insight in what it means to live victoriously in Christ. See, it stems from the assurance that God's love and the victory for His believers, it's evident and it's present. See, in the preceding verses in Romans 8, Paul uh, discusses various trials and challenges that believers may face, including persecution, hardship, and even death. And despite all these adversities, Paul emphatically declares that believers are still more than conquerors. And what that speaks to us, it speaks to us that no matter what comes our way, no matter what obstacles we face, no matter what adversity is there, we are still conquerors through Him who loved us. By His love, we can conquer all those things. And this assurance of victory serves as a powerful motivator that should inspire you and I as believers to face challenges with confidence, with courage, knowing that we're ultimately triumphant in and through Christ. This is a verse that gives the realization to us as believers to be conquerors, not merely survivors, because a lot of us have that mentality. We're just surviving this walk. We're just surviving uh, this journey. We're not called just to be survivors, but conquerors in every circumstance we face. And this truth transcends from, uh, from, from us to begin to view our struggles through the lens of victory. Oftentimes we see a struggle and we view it from the lens of defeat. We're already, uh, de- we de- declare even sometimes defeat when victory is right at hand. We need to begin to look through the lens of victory. We need to declare victory even if the circumstance seems too deep. We need to begin to understand that we are more than conquerors. Because this verse, it inspires perseverance, revi- resilience even, even in the, in, in the, in the face of, of adversity knowing that nothing can separate us from Christ. This calls us to live out the reality of victory in Christ. This verse challenges us even as believers to align our thoughts, to align our words, to align our actions with the truth of God's word that we are conquerors, more than conquerors, rather than being swayed by the circumstances that are constantly around us. We have to have the dedication that involves an intentional choice to walk in faith and obedience, trusting in the promises of God, because this is the promises of God, that we are more than conquerors. That's a promise that he's laid out for us. And we have to walk in that promise and begin to embrace it. See, the verse we just read in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, it reminds us to embrace a mindset of victory. We're encouraged throughout God's word to adopt a mindset and a truth that we are victorious in and through Christ. Then, moreover, that we are conquerors through Christ. And this mindset will enable us to face challenges with confidence and hope rather than a sense of defeat. And we have to begin to walk in faith. We're called to walk in faith. We're called to trust in God's love and in His promises, even when the circumstances are deep, even when the situation is rough. And this involves surrendering control and relying completely on God's strength and guidance. So you know what I love about this verse? Is that we're made more than conquerors because He loves us. Because He grants us that love. And we're called to walk in that love that brings victory. If anything could be said, Romans chapter 8, verse 37 serves as a rally cry, even if you will, for believers to live victoriously in Christ. And we have to embrace our identity as conquerors through Him who loved us. As conquerors, that's our identity. 
We're not called to be defeated. We're not called to, to merely survive, as I said. We are called to thrive. And by internalizing that truth and that promise and applying it in our lives, we can walk in faith. We can experience a life marked by courage, resilience, and triumph over every obstacle. We are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. That's more than victorious. More than winning. More than succeeding. And we need to begin to walk in that truth. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. It says, For every child of God defeats this world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And that's out of the New Living Translation. And this offers us profound insight into the nature of victory in the Christian walk. See, this verse itself gives us a promise of victory for everyone born of God. For every child of God is promised victory. We're going to defeat this evil world. These evil actions, these, these evil things that come against us. And this assurance provides you and I as believers with the motivation to persevere and overcome the challenges and trials that we face that come at us from the world. And by recognizing that, that victory is not only possible, but it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. I'm going to say that once again. Victory is not only possible, but it is guaranteed through our relationship with God. Believers like you and I are called to press on in faith no matter what. We have that guarantee of victory. It says for every child of God defeats this evil world. Every child. If you're a child of God, you're already walking in victory, defeating this evil world. And what is more important is that understanding the victory over the world is not dependent on human strength, on our own strength, on our own abilities, as I stated before, but on faith in God. Faith in God. And this realization should inspire you and I as believers to cultivate strength through our faith through our faith, knowing that faith is key to overcoming the world, knowing that as a child of God, you are overcoming this evil world. It should ignite with you, within you and I a sense of hope and confidence in, in the midst of adversities. And it should empower us as believers to face challenges, not discouraged, but with courage. This verse in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, it, it, it tells us that faith, faith overcomes this world. And this dedication involves actively nurturing and exercising our faith through prayer, through studying of God's Word, through fellowship with other believers, and obedience to God's commands. See, oftentimes we're not in communion with the Lord. We're not nurturing our faith through God's Word. We're not fellowshipping with other believers, and we're, we're not walking in obedience to what He has commanded us to do. And we think, and we wonder, how come we're not walking in victory? Could it be that we're lacking in some of those areas? This verse reminds us that, that, that walking in faith and overcoming and being victorious requires a steadfast commitment to trusting in God's promises and relying on His strength rather than our own. And moreover, this verse speaks to us about strengthening our faith. See, we're encouraged to deepen our relationship with God through communion, through prayer, through meditation on Scripture. And this strengthens our faith and equips us to overcome the challenges of this world. It's better to, to, to be in a fight for victory when you have another believer fighting there alongside of you. And it reminds us to, to resist worldly temptation. We're called to resist the allure or the attraction, even if you will, of worldly desires and temptations by remaining steadfast in our faith. Your faith has to be greater and what's trying to pull you over to sin. Your faith has to be greater than what is trying to draw you into going backwards instead of forward. And this involves relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. Relying on Him to, to overcome those sinful uh, inclinations, if you will, and live a life that honors God. Believers like you and I are called, called to share in the kingdom. It's said that everybody born of the Lord, every child of God will overcome will be victorious. Each and every one of us can experience that abundant life through Christ. That life characterized by joy, peace, and moreover, that life characterized by being victorious. And this comes from knowing that our ultimate victory is secured in and through Him. I love 1 John chapter 5, verses, uh, verse 4. I believe that, that, that it reminds us that that victory over the world is attained through faith in God. And that's something key to note. That's a key principle that we should embrace. 
And by embracing this truth and applying this within our lives, we can experience victory in Christ. We can overcome those trials, those tribulations that the world tries to throw at us, and we can do it with confidence and assurance. Moreover, the verses we read out of out of Philippians 4.13, Romans 8.37, and 1 John 5.4, they give us profound truths about the nature of faith and the abundant victory that we have as believers. And through these key verses we just went through, I believe that, that we can experience, if we apply them, we can experience victory in every aspect of our lives. Victory in and through Christ. Because from Philippians 4.13, we learn that strength comes from Christ, motivating us to face challenges and trust in God's power. Romans 8.37 reminded us that, that we're more than conquerors through Christ's love. And it inspires us to persevere and have faith, even in, uh, in view of struggles. And we have to view everything through the lens of victory and not of defeat. And finally, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, it assured us that everyone born of God overcomes the world through faith calling us to dedicate ourselves to a life of faith that conquers the world's temptations and trials. I pray that you reflect on these verses and you'll be reminded that living victoriously in Christ is not about relying on our own strength or even our own abilities, but it's about trusting in God's power, His promises, strengthening our faith through prayer, diving into His Word as much as we can, and aligning ourselves with the brothers and sisters in fellowship. It's also about resisting those worldly temptations, bearing witness to Christ's power, finding joy and peace in Him regardless of the circumstances, because that's what true victory is. I pray that you walk in victory. I pray that you have the reality of victory in Christ embedded in your walk to beginning today. And moreover, I pray that you live each day with courage and unwavering faith as you begin to walk in victory. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, because your word is mighty, powerful, wonderful, and amazing. It guided us and it leads us into victory. And as we study these three verses, Father God, that reminded us how much you love us and how much victory you intend to, to, give, uh, to give to us and how much you've already given to us. May we walk in victory and may we not walk in defeat. As the verse stated, we are more than conquerors, not merely survivors, but conquerors. So I pray that each and every person cultivate Cultivate a spirit of conquering over all those obstacles that the world throws over them. Lord, guide us. Lord, bless us. And continue to shower your victory upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And tonight's altar moment, I believe we can have a moment of victory. A moment of inspirational victory. We can begin to, to think about those things that we've been going through. Think about those challenges we've been facing that seem so big. And we can declare victory over them through these verses, through the power of Christ, through the strength that he gives us. Declare right now, even so in this altar moment, that you are more than a conqueror. Not merely a survivor, but a conqueror. And even more so, declare the truth that you are a child of God and therefore you could overcome this evil world. I pray tonight that you feel the Holy Spirit's power impact you in a mighty way and strengthen you on and moving forward onto victory. Let us pray. Take honor in my praise. Take honor in my life, Lord. It's all for you. Take honor in my worship. Take honor in my praise. Take honor in my life, Lord. It's all for you. It's all for you, my Lord. It's all for you, my King. It's all for you, Messiah, ruler of everything. It's all for. Everything.
Cause I need you to know that it's all, it's all you. Take honor in my worship. Take honor in my worship. Whoa, whoa. Take honor in 